welcome to a bit of Wednesday Waffle. We're just back from our longer donna and uh, I didn't know what I was going to do for this video. But uh, I'm sat here looking out over Caliper Viewpoint having been inspired while we were away. So what did we get up to? Well we went up to Loch Meady and then we went to Durness. You may have heard of Durness, it's been in the news. Well, while it was busy, we found nothing, nothing of, of what was being reported up there. Um, there, was, there was a lot of motorhomes, there was more cars. Um, we went to the car of Durness for the evening and spent the night. And uh, it was, it was busy. There were, in, it ended up being seven camper vans and three or four tents. But in the morning, we were one of the, in fact we were the last to leave of, of the people who overnighted. And there's a surprise. And uh, yeah, it was uh, spotless. It's absolutely spotless. One fire ring had moved uh, to build up another one and somebody left a tea bag and some bread for the birds. I don't know whether the birds use the tea bag or not, but hey, you know, considering what was going on the night before, the, the place was pristine. Um, then we moved on to Shagra Beach, uh, lovely but again busy, and Store Lighthouse, and uh, we, we we had a lovely time after store, and we moved on and came back towards uh, non-civilization, <laughs> and uh, we we were uh, came back through Ollapool and down that way, stopped at Lale Gardens, a couple of nights at Loch Ackleti where we met up with Sandy, uh, who you might know from The Wiltshire Man or Jackal or Knives, both excellent channels, go and take a look. And then we're, we're finishing off here. But I'm starting Wednesday waffles early. One, because it's going to be tomorrow afternoon, probably before we get home and I need it ready for Wednesday. And two, because Mr Angry's coming along shortly. He's uh, not very impressed with people, <laughs> particular drivers, particularly drivers. And uh, he's going to have a moan and a gripe. But uh, at the moment, He's enjoying his holiday, the last evening of his holiday. And I'll be back with you shortly to show you some video and explain what he's griping about. You can, might get a hint from the title of this video. I'm not going to say please enjoy because it is going to be a rant. Anyway, back to the studio and Mr Angry. Mr Angry. Indeed. But first, let's talk a bit about passing places and how they should be used. And this video running at the moment, it's running at three times speed, but it shows us some uses and correct uses of passing places. And uh, it also shows us some of the beautiful countryside we were passing through. So there, a vehicle's pulled over. But he's already let somebody through, so I pulled over to the left to let him through. I also needed to let a couple of vehicles behind me. Everybody was happy. Including me. Oh yes, including me. So, further along. Not a lot of traffic. But there is something coming. And he's a motorhome. And he pulls in, nice and timely to his side of the road to let me pass. That car was parked, we'll come back to that. More traffic, I let it pass. Simple, nobody gets held up and everybody's happy. And there's no great big road tearing through ruining the countryside. But things, things are going to change as you'll see shortly. But then Mr Angry might appear. But for Hurst, as we watch some more proper use of uh, passing places, we'll have Mr Calm. And I'm going to read what the Highway Code says about passing places. The Highway Code 155 Single Track Roads. 
These are only wide enough for one vehicle. They may have special passing places. If you see a vehicle come towards you or the driver wants to overtake, pull into a passing place on your left or wait opposite a passing place on your right. Give way to vehicles coming uphill whenever you can. If necessary, reverse until you reach a passing place to let the other vehicle pass. Slow down when passing pedestrians, cyclists and horse riders. Do not park in passing places. Simple and succinct. Not difficult, but some people out there seem to have a problem. So, what is this problem I'm talking about? Well, we'll see it very shortly on this video. Again, it shows the lovely part of Scotland we're travelling through. But once we get to the problem, I'm going to slow things down to normal speed and we'll have another look. But there is a passing place being used. There's a camper van using it incorrectly. Now let's start things at normal speed so you can get a proper look at what we saw. And I'll keep quiet with little commentary, he says, honest. On the left, not even in a parking place, but opposite the parking place which is already full, making it very difficult for anything to pass. On the right, day van, couple of cars blocking a passing place. And now we're approaching a car park. The car park is full, so people have deigned it's okay to block the passing place outside the car park. Sign telling you it's a single track road. More vans, trucks and cars parked in passing places. And as you can see, it's not over yet. There's a little bit of space for one more to park there. You can maybe even use it as a passing place. Luckily this bit was wide enough to allow for passing. And you wonder why locals get a bit hacked off with people? Please folk, if you're going to come up here, learn to drive passing places. And here we have another passing place being used correctly. Notice how he thought there wasn't room for me, so he backed up. All part and parcel of having to use the passing places properly. Now, the Highway Code does not give advice, but Travel Scotland does. Many passing places are marked by either black and white poles at the roadside or special square passing planes, place signs, but some are not marked at all. Drivers using single track roads must be able to reverse to a passing place in order to let other vehicles pass. Sometimes drivers must reverse more than a metre or two. Driving into verges to avoid reversing is not recommended as cars may be damaged or get stuck in roadside ditches. In Scotland it's usual to give a friendly wave as a thank you if another road user has reversed or waited for you to pass. It can make all the difference. And here you'll note I pull into the right to allow a truck to go past. Not because I'm obeying any law, it's just a bit of courtesy to let him travel through without me getting in his way and a truck isn't always going to be get into a small passing place. So let me continue. Travel Scotland goes on to say, do not park in passing places. Oh look, there's enough room thankfully at this one. Parking your car in passing places to watch birds, photograph the scenery or to leave your vehicle, excuse me, or to leave your vehicle while you go for a walk prevents other road users from using the passing places. If your car blocks a passing place and stops other drivers, cyclists or horse riders from allowing vehicles to move, dangerous situations can occur. If you must stop in a passing place for a short time, you must be prepared to drive on immediately. Parking in or near entrances to farm tracks in field gateways or at cattle grids 
also prevents access by farmers and others who live and work in the area. 24 hour access to gates is often required either by people whose homes are up farm tracks or by farmers who may need more livestock or large machinery to be moved. It may not be easy to see what these access points are in regular use for, but they are usually needed for a reason. So that's all the official advice and all I really have to say is you have them in England, you have them in Scotland, you have them in Wales. I've never been to Ireland so I don't know. However, there is no reason to think they haven't got them. Please learn to drive on them, please learn to use them properly and please don't upset the locals. They get awfully angry and they don't see straight. But they have every right. That is their main road. That is their M1, M6, whichever you want to call it. They don't have an alternative. They can't nip off to an A road or whatever. That is their only road. That is their only way out. And if you remember my dig in the NC500 video about starving on the NC500, that is also how they get to that shop that doesn't exist and drive to the fuel station that doesn't exist. Oh, by the way, this was all shot at the Summer Isles. There's a lovely little fuel, fuel, there's a lovely little fuel station and there's a lovely little shop. And as a bonus campers, you can get water there. Thanks for watching this week's Wednesday Waffle. It was not as much as a rant as it was going to be. If I'd have filmed it live, oh boy, was I going to give a mouthful? But I calmed down a bit and it's no point. As I've said before, we try not to do drama. Join us on Friday for the second part of our White Hills video and also next week for more videos from Desmond's Daughters. Bye for now. Thank you for watching Desmond's Daughters. We'll hope you'll join us again for more photos, waffle, and as we travel around Scotland. Bye for now.